Hi guys and welcome to Tips on Rearing Poultry. I am Isabella and I'm really excited to do this video because it's my first time to make an appearance on this channel. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through some of the major guidelines to always consider while constructing a poultry house, just like this one I'm in as an example. So if you've been following some of the videos I've been posting here, I've been pr practicing poultry on a temporal structure and it's high time to move into a permanent one. So... I would like to share with you some of the considerations to put in mind while constructing this house and I'll walk you through some of those considerations while constructing any poultry house be it for layer keeping or for broiler keeping so this house I'm in right now will be used for layer keeping but while constructing any poultry house there are major considerations that should always be put in mind while constructing any poultry house so if you plan on starting your journey of rearing poultry already in the business but plan on expanding your business or project from a temporal structure to a permanent one uh, i hope this video will give you all the information you're trying to look for and with all that being said let's start so now the first thing to consider is the orientation of the house what i mean here is let me take you outside and i'll show you what i'm trying to mean here So here what I'm trying to mean is the orientation of the house. So before constructing a poultry house, you should know where the sun rises and then falls. So this place, the sun comes from this side and then falls this side. So this is the east and then the west, this side. So this house was uh, constructed in such a way that its long axis is in the east to the west direction. So when sun rises up in the morning, uh, it will move along the roof and not fall the direct sun won't fall inside the, the what the poultry house let me show you what i'm trying to mean here when you enter there is no sunshine inside the house at all through the windows so that should always be put in mind while constructing a poultry house poultry houses are always constructed that way to prevent or stop direct sunshine over the birds always have that in mind whenever you're constructing a poultry house that direct sunshine shouldn't be over your birds because it will stress your birds and if your birds are stressed obviously low you will have low production now as i mentioned earlier this house will be used for layer keeping so this too much light you're seeing here will be closed off using taplins or curtains uh, those very taplins will also keep out the rain and also wind and it will keep the room warm enough for the birds. Moving on to the next thing is, is the size of the house before the construction even begins. So the size of the house will always depend on the number of birds you plan on keeping in that particular house and also what type of birds you plan on raising. So let's say if you're raising broilers or layers whereby a broiler requires one square foot of floor spacing while a layer requires uh, two square feet of floor spacing under a deep litter system i did a video about floor spacing previously and i'll leave a link to that video at the end of this video if you want to know more information about floor spacing now you notice all that that on the floor and all that but do not mind that all this that will be removed even before the chickens arrive here we are just waiting on the builders to install the doors and also put the veranda here and then the cleaning and the disinfection will take place here before the birds arrive. Now the next thing to put in mind while constructing a poultry house or even before constructing a poultry house is the foundation of a poultry house. It should always be taken serious uh, while construction because usually poultry houses are often considered to be simple and low structure. But what you must know is how they carry loads from each part of the structure to the ground, meaning each part of the structure interacts with other parts. So when a foundation is poorly built, it creates stress in other parts which can eventually cause failure. So the loads in the house are transmitted through the structure and eventually to the ground through the foundation. So the minimum depth of a poultry house foundation below the ground is 1 to 1.5 feet and above the ground level is 1 to 1.5 feet as well. And for the posts or the poles you see here are also acting partly as the foundation themselves. The posts are buried a minimum of 3 feet in the farm soil because it carries heavy weight like the walls, the roof and all that. 
Now the posts used here or the poles are wooden and that's why they have polythene wrapped around them at the bottom and part of it underground and the rest exposed to the top. The reason as to why these poles or posts are wrapped at the bottom is to stop termites from eating and finishing the poles. These very poles are made to stand very firm in soil using concrete. Having said all that about the Poultry House Foundation, it's always important to construct one because not only does it carry the weight of the house, but it also stops draining water from the rain into the house and also stops rodents from entering through digging into the house. So let's move on to the next thing, which are the floors. Now, from what we see here is that the floors are completely concrete and it's always important to have a concrete floor because concrete floors are strong enough to stop garden rats from digging into the house and it should also be free from dampness. It should also be extended about 1.5 feet outside away from the wall on all sides to prevent rats and snake problems. What I mean about extending the house about 1.5 feet away from the walls is this hole you're seeing here running up to the other side, this is where they're going to put the veranda. And this veranda helps stopping rats and snakes from creeping into the house. The next thing I'll move on to is the roof. And we used iron sheets and they are about 12 iron sheets that we used to construct this poultry house. But there are other alternatives you can use to construct a poultry house roof like concrete, tiles, asbestos or even grass, depending on what's in your pocket. Lastly, the overhang of the roof should be at least 3.5 feet to prevent rainwater into the house. As I mentioned earlier that the width of the house is 4 meters wide, the width of the house should be wide enough to allow proper air circulation and ventilation, especially during hot weathers. So constructing a poultry house having a width that's wide enough is good to always allow fresh air to flow through and the used air sent out during the process of air saturation. Moving on to the walls of the house. So the walls of the house should be 6 to 7 feet high for the case of a deep litter system for the sides that are fully bricked. And the sides with the windows that are wire meshed. The wall should be 1 to 1.5 feet high from the ground level and generally at the level of the bird's back height. The side walls provide protection for the birds during rainy days or chill weathers and not forgetting sufficient ventilation. But for the case of cage houses, no side walls are needed. As I mentioned earlier about the black polythene wrapped around the poles, aside from stopping termites from eating away the poles, they basically also act as protection against underground water that may cause the poles to rot and also the wet cement during the construction process. And then for this part at the top where the wall meets the roof, there shouldn't be any gap between the roof and the walls because the gaps give open access to rats, snakes and even small birds into the poultry house. The rats will obviously come into the house to eat the chicken feeds but again when they see the chicks they will also prey on the chicks once they can easily enter the house. And then for the snakes they will enter maybe to hide or even eat your chicks if still young and obviously no one wants snakes near them. If possible Grow tobacco near your poultry house and, if necessary, burn it to chase away snakes that may be around the house. And then, for the case of the small birds, they always tend to enter the poultry house through small gaps that are left uncovered. These very birds may seem harmless to your birds, but in actual sense, they are extremely dangerous to your chicken's health and well-being because when these birds have access to enter the poultry house, they usually carry diseases on them and once they come into contact with the chicken's feeds, they will obviously contaminate the feeds and make the birds sick. These small birds carry diseases in such a way that they move from one farm to another spreading diseases. Now take for example, you have a neighboring poultry farm that's experiencing a disease outbreak with their birds and these tiny birds have access to the sick birds in that farm. These tiny birds carry the disease from the farm having the disease outbreak and then bring those diseases to your farm. But once you have every corner of the poultry house closed off from anything entering, your birds will obviously always be safe from any sort of harm, be it from rats, snakes or even the small birds. The next thing I want to move on to are the wire meshes. So when I show this up close, you notice that there are two types types of different wire meshes, one outside and the other inside. The inner wire mesh is a chicken mesh 
and it has smaller holes to block the small animals and birds from accessing the inner part of the poultry house. These holes are too small to block any tiny bird or even rats from getting in and even a butterfly can't pass through these holes and that's how tiny they are. So that's the purpose of the chicken mesh. So the rats and the tiny birds are blocked off but the house still gets the fresh air that it still needs without putting anything that's solid to block the animals from breaking in. The outer wire mesh has bigger holes and it serves the purpose of stopping bigger animals like dogs when they try breaking in or even thieves when they try to break in to steal the birds. Now the reason as to why these wire meshes are put in such a setting is that the outer wire mesh is strong enough to stop any big animals that may try to get in and this inner one stops the smaller animals or birds from accessing the poultry house. As I mentioned earlier about covering any gaps that may give access to the tiny birds and animals into the poultry house, this part with the wire meshes are still open and I'll have to figure out how to close off these gaps between the wire meshes and the roof. The wire meshes must be installed cautiously and firmly nailed to the poles so that nothing can pass through because you can never know what may creep into the house. And then finally I'll move on to the store that's attached to the house. This store will be used to keep anything that will be used here. So when constructing any store, it should always be closed off from anything that may enter from the outside into the store, like the rats, to eat the feeds obviously. Constructing a store like this will fully close off any rainwater that may get in and destroy whatever may be kept there. The floor should be concrete for the reasons I mentioned earlier which are to stop anything like rats from digging into the house and also stopping rainwater from draining in as well. So guys, I was about to close off the video but then I remember that I didn't say something about the door because they haven't yet been installed. So when putting the doors, they should be installed in such a way that they open outwards for the case of a deep litter system. Because when opening, the bedding will block the door from opening fully. And that's why the door should always open outwards. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it very helpful to you, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.